live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE. Covering Inforum DC 2018. Brought to you by Infor. Well, back here on theCUBE, we are at Inform 18. We're in Washington, D.C., uh, here in the Walter Washington Convention Center. Not far from the White House, it's about a, about a mile that way, and uh, Capitol Hill's about a mile that way, I think. I know we're right in here, so, <laughs> but I know we are smack dab in the middle of it. Dave Vellante and John Walls, and uh, Kevin Curry, who's the SVP of the Global Public Sector at Infor. Good to have you with us. Great Good to, to be you, here. Sir. Thanks for your time. So, uh, public sector, you're in the heart of it here, and uh, you were telling us before we went on the air that you've got more than 700 clients here at the we show do, this week? We do, we do. It's the best attendance we've had yet for Inforum. And, you know, we've, uh, I, I joined about six and a half years ago and we, uh, we, we built this business pretty much from the ground up. So it's, uh, it's been a great experience and now we're, now, now we're starting to get a, a lot of adoption within the, within the government, across the government, from federal to state to locals. Yeah, what's that process been like? I mean, especially across those three, because I assume they're all different, you know, local, they're, state, they're federal. All, Everybody has different pain points. They do. Different they do. I mean, and and it's there's different uh, micro verticals within each each of those segments. As an example, if you look at local governments, it could be anything from transit agencies to K-12 uh, schools uh, to you know public works uh, and, and, and to police to fire. They all have all, all different requirements. States the same thing, whether it's Department of Transportation or Department of Health and Human Services. And then when you get to the federal side of it, then it's you know from in the intelligence community to the Department of Defense, healthcare within the feds like the VA and DOD, and you know defense agencies as well. So it's it's a you know pretty wide swatch of uh, of uh, use cases and uh, business cases that you need to be able to sell to. Sure. Charles said something interesting in the keynote today. I want to ask you about it. He said. You know, we, we made a strategic decision to go to the cloud. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to compete with Google and, and Amazon and, and Microsoft for cloud scale. That didn't make any sense for us. And he said, when we were an on-prem software vendor, we weren't managing servers for our, our customers. Now, what struck me there is, if you look back at the software company back in the day, they really didn't care about the server, mm -hmm. right? It was just sort of infrastructure. It was kind of irrelevant to them. The cloud feels different. Um, you've got it seems like a more strategic relationship with, with Amazon. Um, you know, we, we talk about Teresa Carlson and what a force she is in, in the government. AWS in, in the GovCloud has been a huge force. They had a giant lead. So, have you been able to draft off that, or is it just another sort of infrastructure? No, they're, they're a major strategic partnership there with AWS and, and Infor. At the company level, and especially for me uh, with the government, um, they've made the, the right investments at the right time. I mean, and they've, they've actually have cloud environments that are very specific to different segments of the government and to different geographies. Um, so as an example, uh, in the federal government, uh, they have an intelligence cloud called C2S. Okay, which we work with them on. Uh, there's a very large procurement out right now for the Department of Defense called JEDI, which, uh, which Amazon's going after, as well as the other larger cloud providers. So, um, you know, we're obviously riding, riding that horse with AWS. Um, and also for lo local governments, and you know, they've done all of the compliancy for the government, whether it be FedRAMP, whether it be CGIS for, you know, for those departments that are worried about the you know, justice type of uh, requirements. And as you get outside of the U.S., um, you know, they're putting clouds, and we're a global company as well, putting clouds in all the right places. They're, they have a G Cloud offering, you know, in the UK, and uh, as we talked about earlier uh, when we sat down, they're, they're opening a cloud in the Middle East right now too, in Bahrain, and I think Teresa's on her way over there as we speak. Right, right, the first Middle East country to, to claim cloud first, but it just seems like there's a strategic advantage there, and even with the other cloud suppliers, I mean, you know, Google's got its, its niche, big niche, you know, Microsoft with its, with its software state, but it seems like Amazon, with that, that, they talk about that flywheel effect, brings certain technologies that, you know, when you talk to Soma, you guys have been able to take advantage of, it just feels a lot different than the old traditional server manufacturer. Oh, it's a Unix box, and there's no difference between vendor A, B, and C. Ab absolutely correct, and you know, and for us, we've taken advantage of the tools that Amazon has, and obviously we're, we're doing all the compliancy on our applications, and they've got the whole infrastructure piece of it, so the two work very well together. And, and that has allowed you to focus on your, your knitting if you will, it the has. things that you do best, which is micro verticals, suite, you know, uh, across the application portfolio, bringing AI to the equation, automation. We heard a lot about robotic process automation, which is probably a hot topic in the it government. Is. 
So, I mean, Charles famously may have had a quote, uh, I'm sure you heard it, said, friends don't let friends build data centers. Yeah, I mean, so, right you know, that's not a business that we're in, we're a software company. Right. Yeah. Right. So, in the public sector, obviously a different animal than the private sector, mm -hmm. very different needs, different constituents, you got taxpayers, right, you got all that. When, when you bring a, that, the technology into the public sector, what does that do for it, or how does it have to be I don't know, reconformed or, or ad adapted, and then ultimately, what's the payoff, right? What's the return on that investment? So it, it was actually pretty shocking uh, how quickly the, the government has adopted uh, and moved towards the cloud. We, you know, typically there are laggards, everything happens in the commercial market, and then government's a bit of a late adopter, right? But uh, we're seeing them very quickly go to the cloud, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, one being you have an aging workforce, Okay, so the baby boomers are all retiring, so a lot of that intellectual knowledge is uh, going out the door. Um, two um, is there's some economies of scale to be realized by, by doing that, because once you're in the cloud, I mean, you know, it's up to the vendor who's maintaining it to maintain that for you, so, you know, the people behind the scenes have to do it. You know, when you upgrade your software to go from one release to the other, it's automatically done for you. I mean, so there's real cost savings to be had, you know, uh, from, from a care and feeding perspective there as well. Um, also, a lot of the, on the ERP side of things, a lot of systems that are out in the marketplace today that governments have bought, like the Oracles or the SAPs, a lot of these systems are at end of life and the companies are no longer supporting them, it's, it's, so it's a re-implementation for them. Yeah, you know, and so now they're looking, okay, if we have to re-implement and we have to look at our new options, we're going to do it in the cloud. So when you've been around as long as I am, Kevin, right. you, you've seen the pendulum swing. You don't have to agree so vehemently. <laughs> but you know, from mainframe to client server, and then you sort of you're back to the cloud, and now with IoT, seems like the pendulum is swinging back to a, a distributed environment. So help us understand where IoT fits to the cloud, and even you know, your on-prem business. Okay, so, um like I said, cloud is a pretty broad topic, okay? We, we have multiple applications that would run in that environment. So when I look at IoT, I think of things like our asset management platform, all right? We have a very strong enterprise asset management platform that runs in the cloud or runs on-prem. And if you think about infrastructure as an example, uh, which government has a lot of, okay? Uh, think about the ability to have sensors on different, on different pieces of equipment and being able to read that information. Think about uh, using drone technology, okay? To be able to do physical inspections under bridges so you're not having people having to climb around underneath there. I mean, so being able to do live feeds of data and be able to streamline the way you do business and have, uh, have that automatically captured within an application. So yes, that, that is one area where we see it. I mean, there, you, I think you're going to see more and more of you know, robotics and artificial intelligence and all the things come into play. I think you heard a lot about that here and, and uh, it's, it's here. I mean, there, there were things we saw in movies before, but now the technology's here today. Well, the other thing we heard this morning, and Charles has always talked a lot about the data. You guys talked about your data lake. I like to think of it as a data ocean. Mm -hmm. you, know, you think about all the data out of GT Nexus and you know, your, 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 your customers that are providing you know, data to that, to, to inform. Mm -hmm. um, the data model starts to really expand, and you guys have seemed to really take advantage of that. Talk about the data, the importance of data, the importance of securing data. To, to the government? Well, well, think about that. I mean, there, there's islands of information that, that governments have, okay, that if they were able to consolidate that data and put some intelligence into it, be able to make business decisions versus, you know, uh, one system sitting over here, one system sitting over here, and none of them ever communicating or talking to each other. You know, the, the ability to, you could do it from anything from, just think about crime statistics, okay, the ability to deploy resources, you know, uh, where the crime is, and then as it moves, be able to further deploy resources. The, you know, New York years ago did things like that with Comstat when they were cleaning up Times Square and so forth, but just think of that as a concept, real time, being able to man manage data. So you've got, uh, here at the show, um, we were talking about earlier, 700 some odd clients, 725. You've got the Federal Forum uh, that you, for the first time. Um, why now? And, and, and what are you getting out of that, or what do you hope to get out of that at the end of the, at the, end of the week? So, uh, the, the whole executive team and our board of directors have made significant investments in this marketplace because they understand that you know, government is, is a very large beast, if you will, and there's a lot of opportunity for deployment of our solutions and there's a real need to solve 
problems for constituents here as well. So we've, they've made very significant investments in things like, uh, for security like FedRAMP, compliancy. You know, some companies are doing it on, on some of their solutions. We're doing it across the board on all the products that we take to the government marketplace. So we're invested in it. You probably heard today, Charles talked about the fact that we're going to have a federal cloud suite which we are, so I mean, that means federal financials, okay? Actually being able to solve all the problems for the federal government and comply to all the, all the needs and all, all the things that are part of uh, uh, mandated accounting for, for the federal government. So we're, they made all the right investments and in human capital management would be another area. Um, if you think about, we've got a, an application called Talent Science, the ability to hire the right people for the right job and retain those people. Um, just think about, you know, uh, ICE is a good example. You heard they have to hire, you know, thousands of people to deploy on the borders, right? How, how do you quickly ramp and hire all these right people if you don't have the right tools to do it? Mm -hmm. You were quoted in Time Magazine, Mark Benioff's <laughs> new publication, yeah. uh, about America's crumbling uh, infrastructure. What, what role do you see technology playing generally and specifically in for software in helping with that problem? So we, we're, we do a lot today around infrastructure. Um, as an example, uh, we have a very strong presence in uh, transit agencies here in, in the U.S. Uh, New York City uh, runs us. They, there's a, they manage about a trillion dollars worth of assets there. So anything moving in, out, or around the city, so subways, buses, trains, tunnels, bridges, Metro North, Long Island Railroad, L.A. runs us, uh, San Francisco runs us, Chicago runs us, Dallas runs us, and, and many others. So we're managing all, all that, that infrastructure. So you're, you, you hear a lot about infrastructure bills coming out of the federal government, and they're right. I mean, a lot of these, tunnel, a lot of these bridges and tunnels and even roadways are, were built you know, back during World War II, right? And, you know, they're, they're, they're aged, you know, they're, they're, they are starting to crumble and there's going to be a lot of money spent to do that. And, and when it comes to rebuilding those types of things, there's a lot of assets that are going to need to be managed, you know, to do, to do that. So we think there's a real opportunity for software, such as what we bring to the marketplace, to help with that process. How about talent retention? I mean, obviously, as administrations come and go, mm -hmm. you know, people, people move, but but, but there's been a lot of brain drain in, I mean, take, take the patent office, uh, people in, in commercial industry stealing some of the best and brightest out of government. Can software play a role in helping better retain, train, you know, evolve, you know, growth paths and careers? Yes, I guess in a couple of different ways. I mean, number one, I think the applications of today versus the applications of yesterday have changed so much. I mean, you look at, you know, the applications you have on your mobile phone, the ability to have that look and feel. I mean, the, 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 our kids today are going to go into the workforce and they won't settle for anything less. They're going to want to have that look and feel. They're going to want to have those intuitive type of applications that help them do their job. And that's, that's the kind of uh, uh, offering we're bringing to the marketplace. Then, from just actually bringing the right people in. We have an application called Talent Science, as an example, where actually there is multiple different areas of your personality that it can determine and map it back to your top performers in your company and determine the right people for the right job where they'll fit into that environment and, and they would thrive, hopefully, and it should increase retention uh, on that type. So we, we've, we in government, we've, we've actually uh, sold it to uh, Departments of Health and Human Services for hiring caseworkers. Okay, or police departments for hiring of, of, of law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, so th there's a real opportunity to take those types of applications and do some pretty pretty creative things. What's the, um, I hate to say the pain side of it, um, but the, you know, dealing with the government, obviously contracts is, is an issue, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, a challenge sometimes, maybe for you. I'm curious, in, a, in a, a quickly evolving space such as yours, how do you, um, help them keep up with you and, and their regulatory oversight and uh, the whatever mandated restrictions they have, all those things you know, that come with government, yeah. it, it, it just doesn't square up with what well, you it, do. Well, it is, it's a very, it, again, to your, to your point, it's a, different, it's a different industry with different requirements and everything here is, is very open and, and above board. It's, it's open procurements, everything is competitively bid. Um, 
there are contractual vehicles that you can competitively bid for that will allow you to be able to do business a lot easier in the future. Sure. I mean, in the feds, are, you know, you have things like the GSA 70 schedule. Um, uh, UK you have something called G Cloud contract. Uh, a lot of states have um, vehicles where you can bid for. So all states and locals can buy off of those contracts without cause you're having to go to competitive competitive offering. So there's ways that the business can get done without having to go through a every lot of the major yeah, pain right, process. Right. But then there's, then there's also competitive RFPs, which, you know, we'd, we'll, they'll put a bid out, it'll be very detailed. Um, you have to answer 3,000 requirements. And, uh, and then after that, you'll end up going into a, an orals and a, and a demo process. And, you know, nine months later, they're going to pick a winner. Yeah. <laughs> then, right. then you go through, but then you have to go through a very painful That's contract negotiation process. <laughs> That's exactly what I was talking about, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, well, Kevin, thanks for being with us. We appreciate the time. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, and uh, it sounds impressive, right, with the turnout you had. So I'm sure you're very, very pleased with the response you've had here on the show floor so far. I am. And I thank you for your time. And uh, you bet. Have a good show. Look forward to seeing you down thanks. the road. Bye -bye. All right, sir. Thank you. Back with more here live on the Cube. We're at in uh, Forum 18 and we are in Washington, D.C. I'm quite sure they got me pinned up back here, but I can't get <laughs>